It is extremely difficult to visualize a curved four-dimensional space-time manifold. Penrose diagram makes it easier by bringing these infinities into a finite distance, thus allowing you to plot the infinite space-time in your finite two-dimensional notebook paper. These diagrams were invented by Roger Penrose, who used to call them conformal diagrams. Penrose diagrams focus on two key features, the causality and the global structure of space-time, and squeeze an infinite space-time into causally meaningful finite coordinates. We'll unpack all these words in today's video. Space-time diagram. First, let's see a space-time diagram plotting the time and x-axis at the right angle with each other. For simplicity, we suppress the i and z axis. The speed of light plays a crucial role in special relativity. In a space-time diagram, the path of such light is given by x equal to plus minus t line. This line makes an angle of 45 degrees. Any point in a space-time diagram is an event. Suppose we have an event happening at the origin. A light cone represents all light rays from the origin. An event can only affect those events lying inside its future light cone and get affected by those events from its past light cone. Conformal mapping. The space-time is infinite on the x-axis and time axis. What might be the way to map these infinite coordinates to finite ones? Here are two functions. Please pause the video and see which might be a suitable option. The tan function looks particularly appealing. All the values of x from minus infinity to plus infinity are mapped into a finite range of minus p half to pi half. This is exactly the trick the Penrose diagram uses to bring infinite space and infinite time to the finite two-dimensional plane. Minkowski Diagram The simplest example is a flat space-time diagram called the Minkowski space-time diagram. The Minkowski space-time is without any gravity and thus flat. The space and time axis are from minus infinity to plus infinity. While the tan function on x and t can bring it to a finite region, the new coordinate doesn't satisfy the second condition we wanted. The second condition was that the light rays should move at a 45-degree angle. We can obtain that, too, by massaging space and time into a new coordinate known as the light cone coordinate. Nicely, this new coordinate ranges from minus p-half to plus p-half, while our original range was all the way up to infinity. The shape of the region bounded by this boundary is indeed a triangle with infinite space and time squeezed into a p-half region. Features The path of light rays is always represented by 45-degree lines. Thus, it is easy to discern if two points are in causal contact, which makes the diagrams very useful. The corners of the triangles are future and past infinity i plus and i minus being time-like and i zero being space-like. All of the massive particles, moving slower than the speed of light, will eventually reach the future time-like infinity. If you move at the speed of light, you will reach region capsule plus i and minus ie, which are the future infinities of light. The price one pays for this is that distances are not accurately portrayed. Two points finitely separated on a Penrose diagram may or may not be an infinite geodesic distance apart. Now let's see the case when x is positive and negative. Then, the space-time can be represented in a Penrose diagram by doubling the triangle to a diamond with left and right asymptotic regions. One important feature of Minkowski space is that all of Minkowski space is in the causal past of an observer at i plus at a time like infinity. This is because the past light cone of the observer covers all of Minkowski's space. Why is this important? Characteristically, 
black hole spacetimes are such that observers at infinity cannot access all of the space-time since they cannot see behind the event horizon. This brings us to the important topic, Penrose diagrams for black holes. Here is the space-time diagram of an extended black hole known as the Kursakal space-time diagram. Region 1 is the area outside the black hole. Region 2 is black holes, and the shaded region is black hole singularity. The boundary between Region 1 and Region 2 is the event horizon. Once you enter from Region 1 to Region 2, a black hole, there is no hope of getting out. All the light cones from the black hole end up in singularity and cannot reach Region 1. Region 3 and Region 4 are quite unexpected. Region 3 is a wormhole, as we can never reach it, but things from Region 3 can escape to us. Region 4 is a mirror image of our universe. As pleasing as the Kruskal diagram is, let's collapse it into a finite region using the Penrose diagram. The math to get from Kruskal to Penrose uses a similar transformation trick. For example, here is the derivation done in Seen Carroll's General Relativity book. The Penrose diagram for Region 1 is the same as the Minkowski diagram a diamond. This is because, outside the black holes, space-time is flat and asymptotically close to Minkowski ones. Region 2 is the black hole. Just like in the Kruskal diagram, light cones are at 45 degrees. Thus, anything in Region 2 hits up singularity. The major difference between Kruskal and Penrose is that the entire space-time, including black holes, wormholes, our universe, and the mirror universe is represented in a finite region, showing on your screen.